done things that nobody expected would be done and we have managed to make sure that although things are not going the way we had planned but they haven't gone overboard mr president um when did the u.s fed begin raising the interest rates maybe maybe two years ago immediately after the serious the, the covid situation that is when they began to to meaning increase. they were already doing this by the time of your election they, but they were not at 5.2 no, no, I'm, I'm just asking yeah they had in begun terms of what was happening they had begun. i asked that because in april this year that's yeah. when the government to government deal started correct and i remember your deputy gadi gashagwa saying that um those people that have dollars in their houses it is time to sell because yes. you're just about to suffer loss yes yourself you said that you see it going below 120 correct 115 dollars even correct so if you have all this information why then promise something that was also bound to the changes in the global economy you see and now you're saying it could have gone up to 200 which figure do we trust mm -hmm. let me tell you my friend we live in a, in, a, in a global environment. And, and I know you're saying that because uh, when we structured the G2G, many people and, uh, keep saying, but this is what, what's happening in this country. This is what's happening in this country. Fuel today is at diesel 200 shillings, 201 in Kenya. It's exactly the same in our neighboring countries, Tanzania, Uganda. Many people think that fuel in Kenya is artificially managed by the government of Kenya. Mr. It is President, not. We'll come to that. So, so, we'll come to no, the that's, I'm just giving you as an example yeah. because so that you understand mm -hmm. where we are. And I want to say this without fear of any contradiction. If we had not tamed already we were having stockouts here of fuel because of the lack of dollars. Because all these oil companies were running around. When I came into office, the first people I met were the oil companies. And they told me, look, we, 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 we can't find the dollars. You know, although we are being told uh, dollars is at 120 something, 130, we can't find it. You know, the dollars are not there because the rates were artificial. So we came to discover later, you know, that, oh, this dollar was being managed artificially. And that is how we realized that $2.6 billion of government money had been used, sold to banks to support an artificial uh, exchange rate that was actually going to go the opposite direction. Mr. If we hadn't been managing the uh, dollar exchange rate artificially, today we would be talking a different story. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, you've been in office for 15 months and right. you wouldn't want to go to what happened in the previous regimes and that's why you are taking I us. am not talking about any, any previous regime. I'm just giving that you was the facts. Artificially, what you're talking about. Um, let us remain here and we're looking at even the region in terms of the East African region, look at even the Uganda shilling and the Tanzanian currencies, they aren't depreciating as fast as they are, as Kenya is doing. In fact, uh, some of those currencies are actually appreciating as we speak today. They do not have a government-to-government -government deal, but they are somewhere. They, most of them import from Kenya. The question is, what has been the problem with the government-to-government -government deal, and why has it not been able to fix the slide in the Kenya shilling? You know, the government to government, government deal is not the only thing that will fix the exchange rate. It is one of the many things, right? We are a different economy from Uganda. We are a different economy from Tanzania, right? We have much more imports. We import much more for our industries because we are a different economy for all our other services than Uganda or Tanzania does. We are not in the same category economy-wise. We are a middle-income economy. They are in a different category, not like us. So you cannot compare them and us. Then you are not comparing the same, uh, same stuff. And I don't want us to talk about other countries because uh, then 
I don't want us to say which country is better than which one. Then Mr. Sure. President, let's nice. talk solutions. Yes. Mm. Um, because this basically drives almost everything, mm. right, in the country. So the question would be what you are doing to strengthen the Kenya shilling. Precisely. Mm -hmm. That now you're talking. Three things. Number one, you have heard me clearly. In the last budget, I said we are going, there are things we are importing today which we should not be importing. We shouldn't be importing cement. We shouldn't be importing steel. We shouldn't be importing furniture. We shouldn't be, there are many things we are spending huge amounts of money to import when we can manufacture them locally. That is the reason why we have put a levy on the import of these unnecessary imports of products into Kenya so that we can stem the export of our foreign currency and manufacture those uh, items locally. Number two, we are importing 500 billion Kenya shillings every year of food items. 500 billion from edible oil to maize to rice to all those 500 billion US dollars we are importing. Uganda does not import that much food. Tanzania does not import that much food. We are the only country that imports that much food. Why? Because we haven't paid as much attention to agriculture. And number two, we need to understand that while Uganda 80% is, is arable with rain, Kenya only 15% is arable with rain. Tanz uh, Tanzania is a completely different story. Almost 60% of their land has rain and is arable. Ours only 15%. That's why we are importing $500 million uh, of food into Kenya. So what do we need to do? We need to pay attention to our agriculture. The reason why we have invested, and that is why in the manifesto that I sold to the people of Kenya, agriculture, modernization, mechanization is one of the big tickets that I decided that I'm going to do. We have changed the trajectory on our stable food. Today, we are producing more in terms of maize, which is our stable food. In fact, my plan is that by next year, we shouldn't be importing maize into Kenya. We, we should be produced enough. This year, we have increased our production of maize by 40%, more than we did uh, last year. Last year, we produced 44 million bags. We are producing 61 million bags this year. And it is because we have done interventions. Fertilizer that was being sold at 7,000, we are now selling at 2,500 because we are supporting production. We are full scale into the space of edible oil that we are importing. I am working with different governors. This year, we are working on uh, sunflower, we are working on soya, we are working on palm oil. W the president of uh, Indonesia was here. We have agreed on a whole chain because they, they, are, they are, uh, the biggest country that we import edible oil from. They are going to work with us to grow palm oil in Kenya. That project is being led by uh, county governments. In fact, it is being led by uh, Gladys Wanga, the county governor of, uh, of Homa Bay, because it is in the coastal region and around Lake Victoria that we will have the biggest uh, uh, space and the biggest opportunity for us to produce palm oil. We are going to uh, do more around uh, sunflower. We are going to do more so that we also stem the tide of loss of dollars into other jurisdictions because of food imports. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I am doing. Number three, so we are also, I am also looking at how are we going to get more foreign exchange into Kenya. That is why I am working round the clock to make sure that we have more Kenyans working in Kenya, in foreign companies when they are in Kenya, and we are also connecting Kenyans to opportunities outside Kenya.
for your information, just so that I conclude, um, I made a commitment in our plan that we want to increase foreign remittances coming into Kenya, hard currency that comes into Kenya from uh, foreign remittance from $4 billion to $10 billion. It is the reason why we just concluded a diaspora investment conference here in uh, KICC this week. It is the reason why I have signed a bilateral agreement, uh, labor agreement with Saudi, with, uh, with uh, UAE, with Germany, with uh, uh, Canada, and many other countries we are exploring possibilities. And for your information, as a result of those what I have been doing, between now and next month, January, the first 10,000 Kenyans will be leaving to go and work in foreign countries so that they can support themselves and support Kenya because many countries have established a strategy on how to grow our uh, to grow their foreign exchange earnings. Now, on, on, on the other hand, uh, maybe still on the government to government uh, deals, uh, is it giving us as a nation the desired uh, results? Absolutely. Eight months down the line. Absolutely. In fact, that same uh, um, government to come government product or program, many countries are seeking to know how they can copy that uh, that program because it is giving us what we couldn't have gotten in a different way then how can we control the prices now you see fuel it's been up and down like right now we're talking of 210 212 per liter Ma Ali yes <laughs> you heard me say this the, the the price of fuel is not determined by the government of kenya it is not determined by any company it is determined by the producers. That is why today the price of fuel in Kenya is the same price in Uganda, is the same price in Tanzania, because we buy from the same place. Uh, 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 you know, I have heard people say uh -huh. the president should reduce the price to 150. How are you going to do that? Unless I take taxpayers' money and go and subsidize you know, subsidized, <coughs> which is removing money from this pocket and putting it in this other pocket. Mwashimua Rais. Mwashimua Rais, tunakusema kwa mba beya mafuta, serikali haina wezo mkubwa kusana beya mafuta.